MMA media member, Aaron Bronstetter, had an interesting tweet a few days ago. He says, quote, if you had to bet your house on a current Bellator champion beating a current UFC champion, who would you pick? So I don't have to do much more other than to say, <laughs> Matt, it's back on you. Um, I'm going to throw a disclaimer here. I'm not confident in any of these champions beating a UFC champion right now. But if I had to make a pick, if you're forcing me to place my money on the table, um, the value of my house, that is specifically to the question, right? I will go with the current light heavyweight champion, Vadim Ninkov. And that's I think that's really tailored, tailed off of what we just saw him do in the cage this past weekend. Um, he looked vastly improved. He showed that... Um, uh, he can shore up those holes that, you know, Corey Anderson kind of exposed in that first matchup. He looked really good, man. He looked like a guy that was tough to figure out. He was sharp with his striking. Uh, takedown defense was on 100. Um, so I think that uh, that would be the most competitive fight for me, would be in the light heavyweight division if you put him against Yuri Prohaska, um, especially, let's say, if, end up, if it ends up being Glover that wins that rematch there. I like that matchup even more, I think. But um, – yeah, again, with going back to that disclaimer, not very confident in that. But just for the argument's sake, that's my choice. All right, goes. How about you, man? Uh, who do you like in this one? I'm right. googling U-Haul rates as as it stands right now, guys. This is not. <laughs> this is kind of grim. But uh, look, if I had to do it, I'd probably take a chance on Johnny Eblen, just because uh, if you look at the equivalent in the UFC, what's his big hole, right? Alex Pereira, his whole is wrestling, and that's where Johnny Evelyn is is a superstar, right? The thing is, he doesn't have very much experience, but then again, it is Pereira, right? So if I'm going to take a stab at it, I'd probably do that. The problem with this question, man, is like where Bellator succeeds and accelerates is kind of those are the same strengths in the UFC. Um, so you're talking about some of some of their best superstars there. It's really, really tough, man. But I guess if I had to pick one, it's Johnny Evelyn, and I just hope – that guy, I just feel like, uh, can be a future star for them. I think he's still improving, so I would do that. But yeah, I've probably got boxes out here in the living room, guys. <laughs> <laughs> guys, aren't you being a little harsh? I mean, the the Strike Force guys, a few of them came over and won titles, guys and gal. Um, WEC, a lot of times they were regarded as the JV 155 pound division and Cowboy Pettis, uh, Benson. The last two won titles. Cowboy was a superstar in the UFC. Uh, Bellator sent a few cats over and they've done well as, as well. So I, I don't know, Mike, what do you think? Are, are, are these guys not as confident? Are, are they putting the for sale sign too early? Yeah, I think so. Honestly, um, I was going to say Johnny Eblen before goes so rudely jacked my pick there, but, um, I saw, you know, I think he's probably got a pretty good, uh, path to victory there, but I also like the welterweight champion. I think Yaroslav Amosov is extremely talented and I think he would be yeah. a very interesting matchup with a Leon Edwards, Kamaru Usman, whoever wins that trilogy fight. Um, especially Leon Edwards though. I mean, we saw what happened in that Kamaru Usman rematch before he landed, you know, the head kick heard around the world in the fifth round. I think he was losing out a lot of the elements where Amosov is very strong at. Uh, he comes from an amazing team as does Eblin at American top team. They come with, you know, the best trained fighters, the best game plans. And I think they would have a shot in either of those fights at minimum. I mean, I don't think they would be 50, 45 blowouts, even if they did go the way of the UFC champions. So I like to think those fights would be more competitive, but I think the three weight classes we've touched on here, welterweight, middleweight, and light heavyweight are the ones where this is a real conversation. Pretty much every other division, I think the UFC has it pretty comfortably in the bag there. Um, but with these three divisions, I think we're all talking about, you know, similar stuff with Nemkov style, with Eblin's style, with Amosov's style, and it largely centers around their ability to outgrapple their opponents. And I think that's what it would come down to. And in fights like that, I think, you know, all those guys have a shot. I'll yeah. make it up to you, Mike. I'll do you a favor. When this is all over, you can move into the guest room right here, okay, when you miss your house. <laughs> as long as it's not sharing a wall with uh, George there, I'm good. <laughs> Oh, the snoring. He's heard about the snoring. Right, I got it. I got it. All right, but listen, if the captain's watching, Eric Albadassin, he's going to say, what about my boy Pit Pitbull? He's won uh, two titles in two different weight classes. He's beaten notable names. He's defended his the two titles across the, the three different reigns like seven or eight times. Are we dismissing him too quick against Volkanovsky, who has been on fire? I'm not high or nothing. I'm sober here as I do the show. I would say no, because we're talking about a guy in Alexander Volkanovsky who's about to challenge for his second title, who has soundly defeated 
arguably one of the greatest featherweights of all time and Max Holloway multiple times. So, so no, um, I, I, that, that one didn't even come into my mind as a question. Like, yes, when you're looking at the Bellator champions across the board, your points of Patricio was one of their best, but that's in the worst division possible when you compare it to the UFC. Mm, okay. Yeah. Nailed All it. Right. Someone in the comments said there, uh, you know, maybe Chris Cyborg, give her her respect. Uh, obviously, we've seen the Amanda Nunes fight, but a lot has changed since then. I do think, in fairness to uh, me, Diamond 44, that would be a competitive fight in there as well. And I'd like to see that rematch between Amanda Nunes and Cyborg for sure. But um, I could see it ending the same way, honestly. Yeah, and I didn't even bring it up because I think technically right now Cyborg's in that free agent stage, right, Mike? True. Yeah. Uh, just on a technicality, I didn't I didn't see her as, as someone. And, and, and UFC barely has a featherweight division, so what are we even talking about? <laughs> this is true. There's more people on this panel than in the UFC's featherweight division. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. How about this one? One more. Uh, AJ McKee. Had he not lost the pit bull with that undefeated record, the number one ranking that he had at the USA Today Sports and MMA Junkie rankings, and also prior to Volkanovski having the awesome 2021 that he did i don't know i think a lot of us would be like thinking that one over right i mean he looked pretty untouchable uh until this pitbull fight mm, yeah i mean you it's it's same thing as pitbull like you can make a case for it but you just don't feel that great going into it especially now with the change in that weight class as the champion maybe the previous one i might give him a better shot but here uh it's gonna be difficult 